Richard Toy and welcome to another Talking Churchill podcast and today I'm talking to Dr James Goodchild who is an expert on scientific and technical intelligence during World War II and specifically I'm going to be talking to him about R.V. Jones and his relationship during and after World War II with Winston Churchill. So uh, to begin with Jim, uh, just tell us who was R.V. Jones? Well Re Reginald Victor Jones uh, was a scientist uh, uh, who uh, had completed his PhD uh, in uh, 1936 in Oxford. Uh, in Oxford, yes, uh, 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 under the uh, tutelage of uh, Frederick Lindemann, who is, of course, uh, uh, Churchill's closest yeah, known close as friend. the prop. Yes, yes indeed, yes. yes. Yeah. Um, and so, so then tell us about you know, where he was in 1940 and how it was that he came to meet Churchill for the first well, time. Uh, and, and in 1939, uh, uh, the, the, the very same day that war was declared, uh, in September, September 1939, uh, 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 R.V. Jones uh, was given a, a very unique role uh, uh, in, uh, in trying to understand uh, the scientific and technological capabilities uh, 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 of the uh, Luftwaffe. Yeah. And so by the time that Church actually comes to office then in May 1940, you know, what is the situation that is being faced and what is, what is uh, Jones's role? In, in trying to bring uh, scientific intelligence to, to the cabinet and specifically to church. Well, Luftwaffe bombing navigation uh, uh, was the uh, issue that uh, first uh, brought uh, R.V. Jones uh, into Churchill's sphere. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, first time that R.V. Jones met Winston Churchill uh, was in June 1940, uh, when he was called to 10 Downing Street uh, uh, to uh, uh, advised the cabinet on the scientific uh, capacity uh, of the beams, uh, the navigational beams that had been brought to the cabinet's attention. Right. So, so what was? How did it actually pan out when when Jones got into the room? How did he? How did he get Churchill's attention? Well, this is one of these great stories, uh, and Jones. Uh, 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 makes a great deal of it in his memoirs. Yeah, we might, we might show that so the most secret war, very influential book, which we might talk about later. Yes, he, uh, R.V. Jones, um, uh, uh, emphasizes the fact that he really didn't know where to where to sit or where to stand uh, when he entered the cabinet room. Uh, he he had uh, uh, Frederick Lindemann uh, and his. Uh, uh, um, uh, cohort, as it were, on one side, and there was Tizard, the sceptics, on the other side. Jones decided to uh, uh, stand at the end of the table uh, in between the two uh, uh, and present uh, uh, the argument, uh, as it were, for the existence of these beams. Right, so basically they didn't really know what the Germans were doing and it was Jones's job to go in there and, and persuade the cabinet that, a, that he deduced the particular mechanism that they were actually using. Yes, exactly right, yes. And what was Churchill's reaction? Well, uh, uh, he uh, was um, fascinated, uh, fascinated by the science, fascinated uh, by uh, Jones's uh, uh, determined efforts to uh, convince uh, those uh, who he, he, he was uh, talking to. Uh, and Churchill was very keen uh, uh, to pursue this further. So, so Jones sort of wins Churchill over in this sort of dramatic moment. What was their uh, relationship like after that? How many times did they actually meet? Jones makes uh, a, 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 a lot uh, of uh, his uh, so-called relationship uh, with Winston Churchill. My research has uh, uh, proven the fact that they only actually met three or four times in the course of the war. Uh, now the three or four times that they did meet during the course of the war, these were uh, climactic moments right. where Jones was uh, required again to uh, 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 alert the cabinet of the, th the potential scientific and technical threats. Uh, 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 and and um, so it, it, it's it's different uh, from the uh, impression that R.V. Jones has given, uh, in that he wasn't one of Churchill's closest he wasn't one of scientific. He wasn't like a prop in that sense. Exactly right. Yes, right. yes. I said that he often used uh, uh, Lindemann's close relationship with Churchill uh, uh, to present his case uh, uh, for uh, scientific intelligence. 
Right, so in, in the 1970s, of course, you know, after Churchill's death and after the ultra secret is being made public for the first time, then Jones goes ahead and he makes a TV series and he also uh, publishes his memoirs, which have proved, as we were mentioning earlier on, very influential. Now, is there actually a parallel here between Jones and Churchill and the way in which they both wrote themselves into history. We have, of course, David Reynolds's book, In Command of History, which shows how uh, Churchill's World War II memoirs were very influential in shaping the perceptions of that conflict. Is it also the case that Jones was, was really doing something very similar? There is a distinct parallel. Uh, it's almost as if uh, uh, R.V. Jones uh, 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 used Churchill and his memoirs and his writing himself into history as a model uh, for his uh, for for his own um, uh, posterity and legacy, if you like. Mm. And and as sort of part of that, um, just finally, um, his papers at Churchill College, the Churchill Archive Centre in Cambridge. I mean, again, like Churchill, Churchill's papers, these are incredibly extensive, aren't they? It's immense. Um, uh, they, uh, there's hundreds of thousands of different documents, many of them untapped, uh, essentially because it is such a, a, an extensive collection, but also because uh, very few historians uh, uh, ha have considered uh, uh, questioning uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the line that R.V. Jones uh, presented to history. So in a sense, there's actually an irony there because his book was so successful mm, yeah. that he actually deterred a lot of historians until yourself really investigated these in detail from you know, really looking in, in, in immense depth at the, at the material he himself had collected. Very much so, yes. Jim Goodchamp, thank you very much. Thank you.